Welcome back guys, another video, and we're back on the tools. Got my crusty old learning by doing shirt on, already got the sweat happening, and yeah, I'll fill you in. So, the last few weeks we've been out around the islands in Raja Ampat, had a bloody awesome time, it's so good to be back, here's a few photos and things. Didn't really make many videos about that, well actually none, we just filmed a bit of random stuff here and there, but we just decided to enjoy ourselves. But, we're back in Sarong. We motored back over yesterday. We, we knew all the time we were going to have to do this. You can see from the past videos here that the the clutch on the starboard engine was horribly worn. And I ended up just turning the clutch cone around and just flipping it end for end, basically. So we had a good forwards gear and a slipping reverse gear, which is the opposite of what we had before. Because we need forwards, obviously, much more than we need reverse. And uh, it worked. We're back here. We're fine. We cruised around. We had a good time. There's not much wind up here. We mowed it a lot. But we got away with it. And in the meantime, the new clutch cone that I ordered from Australia has arrived. And, uh, yep, here it is. Here it is in the box from Twin Disc. And, uh, yeah, so today I'm going to take the gearbox back out and um, head up to Wick's garage and... Uh, put the new clutch cone in it's much nicer working up there than it is down here in the heat So yeah, I thought I'd show you the process a little bit of taking a gearbox out and changing a clutch So first probably I should have added a little disclaimer here This channel's called learning by doing and that's the way I've always done things in my life I'm not a trained mechanic. So take this video with a yeah, grain of salt It works, but might not be the way a mechanic would do it and if you have any better tips or ways of doing this don't be afraid to leave us a comment down below. I'll probably learn something else. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button. Only 50% of the viewers here are subscribed. So yeah, it helps out a lot on the algorithm. So yeah, sub and like. It'd be awesome. All right, continuing. Okay, to get this thing out, I'll show you what I've got to do. I've got to undo the coupling for the drive shaft. Slide the drive shaft back to about here. I'm going to take the exhaust pipe off. I'm going to take the water overflow, coolant overflow off. I'm going to take the gear cable off. I've got to undo the engine mounts too. And then there are six bell housing bolts all around the, that connect the bell housing to the engine. And then, yep, you just slide it off. It's uh, quite easy to do. And now that uh, this is my third or fourth time, I'm quite fast at it. I've got my tools up here, I've got the fan on, I've got another fan on, and I've got Marie and Eli down there in the front cabin. Eli's having a bit of a milkshake session, reading a book with mum, and it's nice and cool up there, and uh, I'll try and keep the swearing to a minimum. I'm ready to go, I guess. Let's get into this. As you can see, I'm quite lucky on Trade Run and have a pretty good engine bay to work on. It's just the front side of the engine really that doesn't have full access and even that has a porthole I can take out. For tools on this job, mostly just need the 13mm ring spanner, a 17 and a 19 for the engine mounts and yeah, screwdrivers. That's about it. And because I've done this a couple of times in the last few weeks, these bolts are not rusted, not corroded, they're all quite easy to undo and yeah, pretty easy, pretty easy. Because I'm taking the engine off the engine mounts, obviously I've got to support the rest of the engine. This piece of bamboo has proved to be the right size, so we'll put that under here. That just goes under the sump and lift this up. There we go. Okay. Right, so these the engine mounts are quite flexible, as you can see. So the front ones I didn't even undo; I just bend them up on the rubbers, basically. And they're only going to sit there for three, four hours. Okay, moment of truth. Should all be free now. Okay, all the bolts are undone. And then the gearbox just slips backwards off its spline. Pretty easy. And then it's just a matter of undoing the six bolts, holding the bell housing to the gearbox. Pop that off. It's a bit, it's a bit touchy. Pop it off though. And then you're left with the gearbox itself. Very, very easy. And there we have the gearbox. It's just a cute little thing. Alright, job done for now. Okay, so I'm up here in Wick's garage, well Wick's workshop, and uh, pretty cool workshop, I'll show you around a little bit. He services all the dive tanks, and this is a huge dive industry up here in Raja Ampat, so as you'll see here. Got 
these old biscuit tins, they're actually metal ones. They're all numbered, all stuff in there. Same over here, everything very nicely organized. This is the garage master, he keeps everything tidy. And yeah, all the way through here. Beautiful. Hammers, everything organized. Oh, I love that, on a boat I can't have that obviously. There's five or six different vices. I love that. And yeah, milling machines and grinders and more vices, jacks, really cool. Anyway, this is my little setup here, my little table. I've got my vise, I've got my gearbox, I've got my rags. And um, yeah, I'm about to get stuck into taking it apart. And I'll show you that. We'll get into it. Let's get into it. So first I'm taking out the gear selector. Obviously, marine gearbox only has forwards and reverse, so it just has a, a lever, throws it forward, throws it backwards, and it throws the clutch forwards or backwards. This gear selector has that. It's spring-loaded, so you undo the two, two bolts, and if you lift it out vertically, the actual selector place will stay in there and drop down in the middle of the gearbox, and yeah, don't ask me how I know that, but it's better to turn the gearbox over on its side and pull it out slowly, and then you get the whole lot in one go. Now you can see into the clutch assembly, this is the basically forwards and reverse, throws the clutch forwards and backwards into the gears. Next up, take the adapter plate off. This is the sort of anti-vibration plate that attaches to the prop shaft. It takes out any vibration or misalignment you might have. So once the adapter plate's off, you get out your big boy socket. I think it's a 30 mil or 28 mil or something and wrench that thing, there's a big bolt on the end of the, I don't know, the thrust shaft maybe? I don't know what it's called anyway, the big shaft that goes through the gearbox. Whip that thing out, get your big screwdriver and just gently lever the uh, coupling off it. There's an oil seal in the end of that one, so you don't want to like screech that on the way out, otherwise you're going to replace that. And yeah, you can probably save the money and not replace it if you're very careful. Then you flip her over in the vise and you get to the business end where all the nuts and bolts are. So you need your Allen key set, I don't remember what size it is. Whip them out, I think there's six of them. And then you get your big screwdriver again. And there's little notches built into it specifically for a big screwdriver, I reckon. You put that in there and you lever it gently up. You do all this stuff gently because there are oil seals on all of these pieces and you don't want to pop it up on an angle and then wrench it out because then you'll damage your oil seal. After you've got that cap off, there's one really important bolt in there and it's really really tight I think it's self tightening as the gearbox is turning um, and it pulls that particular shaft in so it's it's actually bolted through into the shaft and that's quite an important one with a big tapered washer countersunk sort of washer on it and that's a very important one I gather so take care of that one and yeah it's very very tight you feel like you're gonna snap the Allen wrench on it for sure but it does pop eventually no, uh, I didn't put any Loctite or anything on it. It's just self-tightening somehow, or because of the the um, tapered washer, or somehow it wedges itself. It's very, very tight though. Next up is the main end cap. This is how you split the housings, basically, on the gearbox. Um, we've taken all the other bits and pieces off. I think there's eight or ten of these uh, little number ten, little ten mil uh, screws around there. Pop all them out, and then get your big screwdriver again. And again, there's two little notches specifically for it pretty amazing now this one's got little splines built into it so you can line it up when you reassemble it but that also makes it sort of difficult to get off and yeah so you can sort of lever it off with your screwdriver and just be very very careful not to damage the faces I do put um, gasket glue gasket goo whatever it's called silicon stuff around it afterwards to seal it but yeah any any um, dents in the faces will mean you're gonna leak oil at some stage so be a bit careful there, but uh, that just pops off. And then you're left with, yeah, you're looking into the face of disaster potentially, because you've got cogs and bits and pieces everywhere. That's the first time you sort of think, shit, why did I do this myself? I'm gonna, whew, I'm gonna make a mess of this. But then you look closer and realize there's only 300 pieces. How bad could it be? So that's it. There's no more bolts to undo. You just start taking cogs out and throwing them over your shoulder, basically. Now, take a very good careful look at what comes out and what order everything comes out in. Stack them in the right order on your bench as you take them out, because yeah, you don't want to be thinking, oh, how did this go when you go to put it back together? Put it back the same way it came out. 
And this last one here, well, this is the thing that I want. This is the clutch mechanism and the two drive cogs. So the rest of it I can basically put aside. I'm having a quick look at the bearings, make sure, but that, they got changed last time. I'll give it all a clean out, but it, that's all good. I don't really have to worry too much, but if you're doing this for the first time, I would clean everything perf perfectly with a toothbrush, check all the bearings, check all the seals, make sure there's no leaks, things like that. But um, I don't have to do this. I've already done it before. I just need to change the clutch. So now I'm taking apart the clutch shaft. There's quite a few pieces on here, so don't bugger it up. Take them off, put them in the right order, so you can put them back on the same way. So this cog here is the reverse gear, and in there where my finger is, that's where the clutch actually engages and forces that cog to turn your prop in reverse. So now we're getting to the business end of things. There's one more spacer, then the clutch cone itself comes off, and this is the part that I need to change. As you can see here, and I probably showed you this in the last video, but one side is completely worn. There's, there's a sort of a coating, a black coating, like a, like a brake disc in a way. I don't know what it's made from, but it's a, it's a fibrous coating that's stuck over top of the bronze metal clutch cone itself. And as you can see, mine on one side is completely worn off. No more coating at all. And the other side is also, there's not too much left of it. Up here you can see the brand new one next to it, huge, huge difference. There's probably five mil of coating on there. So yeah, I should get another couple of months worth of use out of it. Nah, this should last for a few more years now. There's no forwards or backwards on these clutch cones. Either way it goes on. So just slide it onto the shaft whichever way you feel. Freestyle it. Once you've got that clutch cone on, then add the spacers and the shims, put the other cog back on. Put the, the needle bearings, put it all back on exactly how you took it off basically and then yeah you've got your clutch shaft rebuilt. Okay so you've got your vital bits and pieces done, in my case new clutch cone in. In the meantime I've cleaned everything out, I've washed it all out, brushed it out with a toothbrush, checked everything, blown it out with air and I'm ready to rebuild it. Here's where it really, you know, pays off that you took care when you took it all apart. It might look like a bit of a jumble on the desk there to you, but it's all in a very, very precise order to me. Anyway, I start throwing things in, shaft after shaft, and basically sort of just got to put everything back together and then jumble it around a little bit, make sure all the cogs align with each other until basically everything turns before you start putting the covers back on. So just, yeah, basically just throw everything in. <laughs> It sounds weird, but you just throw everything in, make sure you've got nothing left over, and then start spinning things. And as long as they all turn, and they sort of just clonk and fit in together, and that, that's how it's supposed to go. So once the internals are all back in, and you've got no leftover parts, and when you're spinning the, the shafts, all the cogs are turning in the front and the back, and you can put your finger in the clutch and go forwards and backwards, and it actually does something, well then your internals are done. Well there you go, that wasn't too hard was it? You thought you were worried that you weren't going to get it and look, it's all back together and spinning. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to put the casings back together. One big tip I give you, before you do this, have a thorough check around the bench, under your tool, under your rags, everywhere. Make sure there's no leftover internal pieces. Very, very important. Next up is some gasket glue. This doesn't really need to be that high temperature. I think the temperature of a, a gearbox never gets over about 100 degrees, shouldn't do anyway, so just any sort of uh, RTV will probably do. Yeah, whip that around, I just do a good bead and then flatten it all with my finger, make a good nice, nice coverage of the whole thing, then drop the casing on top and press it down, make sure you've got a good even, even pressure on your gasket goo and then start putting in bolts and I sort of try to do them cobweb style. One here, one opposite side, one opposite up, down, and then slowly tighten them in that way too. Don't just go one, two, three, four around in a corner. You want to make sure that you're pulling your casing down flat, like straight down on top of your oil seals and your bearings. So pull it down one side at a time and just don't tighten them from all the way loose to all the way tight. Do it all like many, many times. Do a big circuit. So end casing on. Now it's time to put in this bolt onto the floating shaft. I put a bit of sealant around that as well. Seems very important one. Countersunk washer, put the bolt in and do that up relatively tight, although it does self tighten so you don't have to worry too much. So now it's the cap on the main thrust shaft. Well, I'm just making these names up really. I don't know really what it is, but it's a cap on one of the shafts. Put some more sealant on that because that's obviously also uh, keeping the oil inside, which we need to do. 
and then yep same thing put that on make sure it's really straight pull it down slowly with the bolts do them up all slowly around in a circle and yeah you're getting towards the end now guys you're getting there you're getting there all right so you got that done up take it out of the vise give it a shake and hear it all rattle around and think oh my golly i left a stethoscope maybe or something out of scalpel no it's nothing like it's just the clutch going forwards and backwards on the shaft no big deal so flip the gearbox over and now you're going to put the coupling for the prop shaft on now this is a bit tight and it's an oil seal so sort of whack that on with a with a soft hammer or, or the back of a screwdriver in my case whack it on but be careful that it goes on real straight again don't want to damage the oil seals get that big daddy of a bolt real tight give it a bit of a back bash with a cold chisel at the end to lock it and here you can see this is the clutch going forwards and backwards when I'm spinning it and that's the noise that you're hearing before now it's time to put in the gear change assembly so this thing as I said it's just a little flipper it flips the clutch forwards or backwards put some sealant around the uh, mechanism there and yeah there's only two bolts as as I did before don't drop it in from the top because that flipper will actually fall out and into your gearbox and you have to take it all apart again so flip the gearbox over on its side put that in horizontally very carefully do up the two bolts now you've done it now it's time to test if all your hard work has done anything so yeah stand the gearbox up in neutral yep you should be able to hold the output side and nothing should happen put it in forwards gear and that should spin forwards put it in reverse gear it should spin backwards if it does all that you've put everything back together right success i'd give yourself a big slap on the back or find someone else to give you a pat on the back and shout your beer don't want to be a dipstick and forget your dipstick last up here the anti-vibration coupling let's call it that put that back on no big deal four bolts then last but not least there's the little bracket to hold your gear change cable and yeah we're done I won't bore you with uh, putting it all back on the boat because it's exactly the same as taking it off the boat and I'll get back to you when it's time to test all right moment of truth it's about I don't know it's a couple hours after we had lunch in between but uh everything's back together Okay, now the moment of truth. That's forwards, now reverse. That's reverse. Okay. Oh. That's a success. We're going forwards and we're going backwards, people. It's a win. We're happy. High five for daddy. High five for daddy. Come on, can't leave me hanging. Come on. <laughs> people, come on, give me a high five. You're stinky. You're stinky. I'm not stinky. Yeah, I am stinky. But I can still get a high five. Come on. Whoa. You're too stinky. <laughs> He's not giving me a little action on the high fives today. Oh, Bibu. I think I deserve at least five, probably even ten. I've done a lot today. I've probably lost three kilos of my body weight and sweat. Yeah, but it's like I spend my whole day inside and not playing. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't play with you today, Bibu, because I've been busy. But now, when they've got the boat running properly, we should be good for another three days before the next thing craps out. <laughs> Another high five? Yeah. High five! High five! Okay, we'll finish the video there anyway. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna shower up and clean all this crap up and then we're gonna get on our motorbike and cruise around and get some cool air in ourselves and maybe go and have a beer somewhere. And uh, yeah, we're stocking up food tomorrow, some water, we've got fuel already, and then the next day getting out of here, getting back out into the islands and we'll bring you more of that um, yeah, next video hopefully. Although we might do a little break because I need a little break. But anyway, massive shout out to all our supporters be that just watching these videos, sharing, hopefully you subscribe to see the next one. And then of course uh, our um, main supporters on Patreon and PayPal. Massive thanks, wouldn't be doing this without you and uh, all the comments and that support me. Yeah, even asking why I'm scratching my head so much. It's because I've got a nervous twitch now. I'll probably never be the same after this few weeks of chaos. Look at him, he's yawning. He's like, bring it to an end, daddy, bring it to an end. All right, see ya.